So I kind of just wanted to make this video uh, for everyone who's been wondering where I've been for the past seven months, you know, anyone who actually cares about that, um, and kind of explain what's been going on with me and why I haven't really been around that much. Well, for starters, I should say that I have been in my comment sections responding to comments or having discussions with people on YouTube. That's really something that hasn't changed for me. Uh, if you guys leave a comment, I usually read it. I'll uh, give a response to it normally, even if the video is older. Um, I just want to say, like, thank you guys for giving me some support and just having a conversation with me. That's why I built this channel. I do enjoy talking about this stuff. Uh, but, yeah, um, so... The thing is, is that the reason I've been gone for a while is because of something that happened back in October. So, I should probably start with uh, a little bit of a beginning section here. So, back in around, I want to say, September, maybe even August, uh, my mother actually started having a few health issues. It started with her turning this yellow color, her skin, and she started itching uncontrollably. Um, we didn't know what was going on. It looked like she had jaundice or something like that. And we actually ended up going on a vacation, and she was pretty uh, miserable the whole time because of it. Um, you know, when she got up and did things during the day and was able to get her mind off of it, it wasn't too bad, but it really hurt her at night, and we were genuinely wondering what was going on. Even during our vacation, actually, we actually had to take her to the hospital. Uh, nothing, like, serious back then, just to get a few blood tests done um, so she could, you know, get some answers on what was going on. Uh, but needless to say, the itching and everything and the yellow skin continued until around October, where we found out that um, she actually had a blockage in her pancreas. And that blockage, unfortunately, turned out to be cancerous. Our whole family was pretty shocked about this at first. It was a huge deal when we uh, found out, and it was something that really uh, shocked the whole family. Like, even distant family and relatives that, you know, don't really reach out to us uh, were reaching out and giving their support for us. But, um, yeah, my mom had pancreatic cancer. Now, if you guys don't know anything about pancreatic cancer, it's actually an extremely serious, um, it's a very serious form of cancer. It can, if you catch it too late, kill you, and it's very, um, deadly in most cases. Now, because my mom, uh, had jaundice or whatever was going on, um, the tumor in her pancreas was actually blocking, uh, the pancreas up meaning it couldn't filter things through her blood, which is what actually caused the pancreas, uh, the pancreas, the um, jaundice to start up to begin with. So essentially, um, if it were not for that uh, happening, uh, we wouldn't have ever found out. So in a way, that was a big blessing in disguise for us. Now, luckily, my mom was also eligible and healthy enough to get something called the Whipple procedure done. And what the Whipple procedure is, is where they actually do a very big surgery on her and essentially take out a bunch of her organs that she'll never get back just to get to the pancreas, cut out most of her pancreas because you can actually live with about 10% of your pancreas. And uh, they could take the cancer out and she could make a recovery. And she went through that. Um, it was a very difficult surgery. Me and my family, because of all the COVID stuff, couldn't actually visit her in the hospital. My dad was actually the only one who could do that. Um, so it actually left me having to take care of my house and, uh, you know, come home and basically make dinner for myself or do whatever I need to do um, to try to help my parents out and, you know, feed the dogs and all that other stuff. So a lot of the things that I normally didn't do, uh, I was suddenly doing. I was basically... Uh, running a house and trying to help my dad out the best I could because, you know, he couldn't do everything on his own. But what I really felt bad for was my mom, who was in the hospital. Um, she constantly had to be in a state of sleeping and not sleeping because they couldn't let her fall too deep into a sleep because they had to turn her over in her bed not to get bed sores. Um, she had to be woken up to get up and walk so she could regain strength. 
Uh, it was a very difficult two or three weeks for her, and when she finally came home, she started to feel a lot better, I think. Uh, a lot of it was a comfort thing, um, you know, it was... It was a very difficult time for her, though, uh, especially being opened up like that. Um, you can imagine how difficult it is, especially considering during the Whipple procedure, they have to break your ribs open. Uh, I don't want to get too graphic with this. I'm sorry if that was an overshare there. But you can imagine what having that done to you uh, does for your whole body. And after all of that, uh, we also wanted to make sure the cancer was completely gone, so the doctor recommended us chemotherapy. And if you don't know what chemotherapy is, it's essentially where they stick a little thing in your vein, um, and you end up getting drugged with some kind of radioactive medicine that is supposed to clean the cancer completely out of you. So right now, she's actually uh, a, a little more than halfway done all of her cancer treatment, um, we're very much looking forward to that being over because it's been very difficult for her during the times when she's had chemotherapy. She's uh, She said that she's hasn't been very ambitious. It's been very difficult for her to find energy. Um, she constantly has issues with her stomach because uh, that's just what chemotherapy will do to you. Um, it's been uncomfortable for her, to say the least. And so one of the things I really wanted to make sure of was that my mom and my dad were comfortable. Uh, I started helping out around the house more and generally just trying to do more for them. Now, I'm going to admit that in the last couple of months, that has slowed down significantly. Um, I've been able to do a lot more stuff on my own, being able to play more games, talk to more friends, do that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, uh, for those couple months, I was... Basically, my mom was always on my mind. It's just, uh, my mom and dad, um, really, and my sister, you know, our family unit, we're a very tight, tight-knit tight group. Um, we're a very close family, and, you know, uh, to have something like that happen um, is really difficult, because my mom is really the heart of our little unit. She keeps everything together. Uh, she took care of me and my sister, made our lunches every day, would uh, do our laundry every week, and drive us places because she was dedicated. She was a dedicated mom. And to see her, uh, one of the nicest people and most loving people in my life, have something like that happen to her was just uh, an absolute shock to my system. I just, you know... I know, uh, I live by the monocom that, you know, life's not fair, um, but I would rather that happen to me than my own mother, you know, it's just, she's been one of the most positive influences in my life, um, and I, I just hate to see her, uh, in any pain, same with my dad, too, and, you know, my sister, we're, we're, like I said, we're a tight family. So, essentially, um, my, all this stuff happening to my mom has also made me really think about my place in life right now. Um, I, I don't want to make any word, like, any uh, doubt here. I, I'm actually in a very good place in my life. I have been since around September. Uh, I've been in a much better place uh, mentally and physically. Um, I feel generally more connected to my, my, uh, my work and my friends. Um... And one thing that's really made me realize that life is so short is uh, all this stuff that happened. Um, you know, I, I don't take relationships for granted anymore, and I, uh, I value every day as it comes, because you never know what could be brought on uh, the next day. And I, I hate to say this, but one thing that really opened my eyes was seeing some of the videos I was a part of and some of the videos being made online. Now, the internet has always been a very toxic place. Uh, it's not a nice place at all, actually. People are, they lie, they uh, mislead, they're toxic, um, and, you know, I'd like to think I can handle that. But being part of that comes with a responsibility uh, for yourself. And that's to not let it bleed into your personality or into your life. Um, 
which I, I think I've successfully done. I, uh, you know, I would like to say that I, I can handle the criticism online uh, better than most other YouTubers can, uh, especially JTech TV. <laughs> I know I bring him up in every video, but, you know, he, when I think of a slimy, uh, horrible, toxic person, I do think of him. Um, and I just think to myself in those times that, you know, in some ways, I guess I'm not very far off from him when I make videos on YouTube, really. Um, you know, it's something I'm involved in every time I make a criticism of another YouTuber, I guess, or attempt to get into the discussion. Uh, it's just something that's kind of unavoidable in most cases. So, I guess what I'm getting at here is that I think that YouTube, for all the positives and all the nice people I've met on here, believe me, I have met some genuinely uh, great people that have sat there and watched my videos every single time. So, uh, there's been a couple people that have reached out to me during my hiatus and said, hey, are you okay? Is everything good? Um, which has been awesome and supportive, and I thank you guys for that. Um, but I guess what I'm getting at with all this is that I th I'm at a place right now where I don't really know if I want to continue uh, with YouTube. Um, this channel especially has had its ups and downs throughout the years. I actually created it off of an older YouTube channel that I did in high school. Um, when I got into college, I ended up making this uh, channel simply for talking about video games, which I still love to do. Uh, I loved doing the, the video reviews that I used to do. The last one I did, I think, was almost two years ago of The Great Ace Attorney or The Sinking City, one of those two. Um, but... I, I, I created this channel specifically for that, and at some point, I decided that I kind of wanted to make response videos to people, and it kind of slowly built up to that, and to the point where I, I just started making response videos um, altogether. And, you know, like I said, that was fulfilling and fun. Uh, it's just a thing where I'm 27 now, and I'm at this weird place in my life where I kind of have to choose pick and choose what I want to spend my time on. Um, one thing that's never going to go away is my passion for playing video games. I just have so many video games. If you guys have seen my video on um, Harmon Smith, the one about emulation, I show a short clip of my uh, gaming setup. Maybe I'll show one here, because uh, it has been updated slightly. But, you know, I love playing video games. I have a, I'm passionate about it, and I like experiencing new things. Um... So I don't think that's something I'm ever going to give up on, time-wise. Uh, and, of course, you know, I still enjoy things like hanging out with my friends. That's obviously something that's never going to go away. I enjoy having a social life. And I, uh, although I've been off with it for a little while, so ever since uh, everything with my mom happened, I enjoy doing things like studying Japanese and going out and experiencing some new things. And... You know, a big part of my life uh, that's never going away anytime soon is the career I want to work towards. Um, so if you guys didn't know, uh, my current job now, uh, I'm actually a CAD uh, engineer. If you guys know what AutoCAD is, essentially we make uh, big buildings. Um, uh, well, I guess that's a, a weird way to put it. In my line of work specifically, we do what's called MEP, which stands for Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing. So we do all of the sanitary work uh, for blueprints and all of the water work and blueprints, all of the mechanical work, which would be things like the HVAC or the um, hood systems in restaurants. Uh, and then we also do the electric, and we make panel schedules, and we get floor plans for it. And uh, just the other day, actually, me and another guy at my, my company had to go to an airport and survey it for an upcoming project. So, essentially, right now, where I am with that is that um, <clears throat> I'm in a good company. It's actually a company that's slowly growing. Um, we have no problems finding clients. We almost always have business. And when we're slow, we always have something to do. And my boss uh, is always willing to up the pay, uh, you know, give pay raises when it's necessary, and uh, he takes good care of us. Um, he even gives us, during holidays, paid time. So, 
uh, it's it's really a fulfilling job so far. But essentially, uh, I want to make a career out of it. And where I am right now is that I have a degree in AutoCAD that I'm using with that. Uh, but also, I kind of want to go for the next big step, which would be to become a full-fledged engineer. And, you know, time at my job is one thing, and doing all this other stuff is another thing. But becoming an engineer, uh, I'm sure most of you know, is probably not an easy thing to do. And it's something that I want to eventually um, get serious about and put my time into which would require me to go back into college for another degree. This time, this would be a full four-year degree. And uh, if I can become an engineer, uh, what I can do is take an exam to become certified as an engineer and be able to sign off on plans, which is a big deal because, you know, if I want to stay with my company, that's something they would need to pay me more for, or I could make a whole career just at that company becoming a manager, a project manager even, and make a a ton of money doing that. But even if that doesn't work out, uh, tons of other firms are always hiring for that kind of thing. It's a big position to be in. Uh, It's very difficult to do, but uh, I think it would be totally worth it, and it's something I'm, I'm willing to put my energy into. So essentially... I I want to put my energy into other things, and I'm not quite sure if I still want to do the same thing for YouTube. Make no mistake, whatever you think about my YouTube videos or the quality of them, it takes a very, very long time to make them in some cases. I think the last one I made on that Justin Carr kid, um, it took me like three weeks just to get the editing down. Uh, That wasn't recording it, that wasn't... um, actually, like, uh, you know, getting footage and everything like that, getting uh, evidence together. It's just, it takes a lot of work to make those videos. And I can't imagine what some of the big channels there, uh, out there on YouTube, are willing to do. Because some of them do an incredible amount of research, and you really don't know how hard it is until um, you sit down and really put the work into it. But to be good at anything... You know, it takes a lot of work. Uh, That's assuming you think my videos are good to begin with. Um, But I guess what I'm saying is that I'm proud of what I've done here. Uh, I think I've done a a pretty good job on the response videos, uh, and I think they've slowly gotten better over time. But the thing is, is that I'm at the point now where YouTube... It was a really fun hobby in high school, and, you know, it's continued to be a fun hobby... But at some point, I think for all this time I'm putting in, um, I'd like to get something out of it. And unfortunately, uh, it hasn't really bore a lot of fruit. Now, keep in mind, I, I'm, I'm aware of why that is. I don't upload constantly. Uh, I don't really um, push myself out there too much. And I'm very selective on what I do make. Uh, every single video uh, I've made has been something that I feel hasn't been touched on enough or isn't something that's really touched on at all. Like, most people haven't made videos about it or anything um, resembling, you know, a big video about it. So, it takes a lot of time even just to get a video lined up that I really want to talk about. Because if everyone's talking about a video and, you know, I agree with the vast majority of those people's points, I don't really see a point in me creating a video about it. So, I don't want people to take this as, I'm leaving YouTube. I don't want people to take this as, you know, I'm definitely coming back either, though, because I really don't know yet. Um, And to be perfectly honest, I haven't really been keeping up with the response videos on YouTube. I've chosen something that I feel is better for me, which is just to kind of stay out of that scene a little bit. You know, I I, I interact with it a little bit. Uh, a, a channel I actually really enjoy is uh, Joe from Seattle. I mentioned him in one of my videos, but I'm sure some of you are actually here from Joe from Seattle, but he's actually had a very positive influence on this community, I feel. He's um, very critical without being an asshole about it, like many other YouTubers are. So I definitely recommend you guys check him out. 
So, I guess that's where I am with this right now. Um, it's just kind of unsure a little bit for me right now. I, I haven't really found videos that I really want to talk about. I was actually thinking of making a video uh, about how I got into PC gaming, but I really don't know how many people would get something out of that. Because, uh, first off, again, it's a topic that's been tackled to death, I feel, and isn't really something that uh, I think most of my audience would be interested in, but let me know if I'm wrong. I mean, I would love to talk about that and kind of reminisce, because I have a lot of great memories of that. And anyway, um, you know, as always, I hope everyone else is doing okay. Uh, you know, the pandemic is still going on, which I seriously doubted would happen for this long, but who knows. Um, I actually got vaccinated because of everything happening with my mom. We don't want to risk her getting sick because her uh, immune system being more compromised uh, because of the chemotherapy. But uh, I hope you guys are doing good. Make sure you guys get vaccinated. Stay safe. Uh, wear a mask out there if you need to. And uh, yeah, I want to say thank you to a lot of the newer subscribers and the old subscribers too. Um, I'm glad you guys have stayed with me for this long. And you know, if I ever make videos again, or if I continue to do this, I hope you'll stick around and we can find a bigger community together. Anyway, guys, thank you for listening to this whole big 20-odd minute rant, and I appreciate all the support. Take it easy.